Okay, welcome everybody. This is the Singapore Online English Speaking Toastmasters Club meeting, and it is now Friday. Let's see, it's evening, I believe, in Singapore. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone, depending on where you are in this world. I'm glad to see so many guests at our meeting. Tonight, what I'll do is I'm going to try to introduce or actually have our, our visitors and guests introduce themselves. And since we have so many people, right now I see there's 34 people on screen or on part of our screens. So what I would like to do is I'm going to ask you for your name, where you are in the world and the time of day it is if you are not in Singapore. And also please, if you are not speaking, please mute yourselves. And for you, most of you on the computer in the lower left hand corner, there's a picture of a microphone. And if you'll click on that to mute yourself, please, if you are not speaking. And if you are speaking, please make sure that you unmute yourself. What we also do here is that in order to wave since or applaud, since most of us will be muted, what we'll do, we kind of wave our hands beside our face so that this would indicate applause. And if you are unable to hear somebody, if they're supposed to be speaking and they're muted and you can't hear, if you put your hand behind your ear, that should let them know that they can't be heard and they need to unmute their microphone. And if you're only seeing your only one okay. picture right now and not a whole matrix of people, you need to click in the upper right hand corner of your screen and switch from the speaker view to gallery view so that you have a whole matrix of people on your screen. Right now on my screen, I have, let's see, it's probably about 28 or so pictures, right? And if you, in order to see the rest of us, you'll see a little triangle on either side of your screen. So if you click on that, you'll shift the screen. But if, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start going around the screen and introduce, asking you to introduce yourself. What I will also do is I will click on the button to highlight your or spotlight you. And so that when you see the yellow box around your screen, please introduce yourself. Oh, one other thing. If you do not want to be recorded because this is being recorded and you don't want to be seen, you can go ahead and the bottom and stop your video. But otherwise we will see you on screen. So. I'm going to start going around the screen that I can see and ask you to please introduce yourself by your name, where you are, and what time of day it is if you are not in Singapore. And I'll start on my screen and let me see. I'm going to pick, it says Korea, and I think it's Patrick. Patrick, please unmute yourself and introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Patrick Gilfoyle. I'm a permanent resident in uh, South, Busan, South Korea. And I'm the VP of Education for Korea Carpe Diem Toastmasters Club. It is now about uh, 10.05 here. It's nice to meet all of you. Thank you and welcome. Mm. Let's see, I'm going to go down my screen. And the next person I can see, it looks like it's Lynn. Lynn, please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Lynn T. I'm from Johor Bahru, Malaysia. Now it's 9 p.m. at the Glee Sam at Singapore. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Thank you very much. I can't see a face, but it says Mumbai, and I'm not sure who it is, but whoever is from Mumbai and has the letter N on the screen, please introduce yourself. Hello. I am Namrata. Hello. <laughs> I am Namrata from Mumbai Toastmaster. I, I have completed my traditional path, competent communicator, competent leadership. And I was a VP education and the president of Mumbai Toastmaster Club in 2018. This is one of the biggest club in District 98. The club size reaches to as high as 150 during peak time. So and uh, the renewal cycle we come around 100, but otherwise we have around 120, 150 members. All right, great. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, Thank I'm going to move on to, I think it's a, it says Shally. Shally, please introduce yourself. Yeah, hi, this is uh, Shalini. My full name is Shalini Taneja, and I'm from Matt Toastmasters Club, Kuala Lumpur. And I'm currently serving as an area director for C3, District 102. 
as well as I'm the treasurer of the club. Nice meeting you all of you here. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks for initiating. Uh oh, my screen changed. <laughs> okay, I'm going to probably miss somebody, but I'm going to try the best I can to catch as many people as I can. I'm going to highlight Marcos. Hello, everyone. My name is Markus Bonsieben. I'm from Düsseldorfer Toastmasters in Germany. And currently it's six minutes past three o'clock in the afternoon here. And I'm looking forward to the meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome. Let's see. The next person I can see on my screen is Sian. I see a whole bunch of moons or somebody has the constant as an astronomer. Oh, hello, hello. Yes. Hi, uh, sorry, I went away for a while. Uh, what's going on? We just, just intro briefly introduce yourself, your name, uh, where you're from, and the, the time of day. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, hello, my name is Lee Sien. I'm from Malaysia, and my club is NUS Toastmasters. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Welcome. Let's see, next... Uh, Sialahadi. I'm sorry if I mess up with people's names. Please introduce yourself. Oh, sorry. Yes. Oops. The the voice. Yes. I'm Ali Hadi. Uh, I am from Iraq. Uh, I work as uh, analytical engineering and I appreciate you to add it in this uh, meeting and uh, I need to uh, to listening uh, for you and uh, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Let's see, how about Ferdinand? How's it? Good day. Oh, my name is Ferdinand de Brain. I'm the president of Benoni Toastmasters in South Africa. District 74, Division I. And I really enjoy, I appreciate being online with all my colleagues all across the globe. And also, if you would allow me, I would also like to introduce Simone. I believe she's on another, she got another complication on her side. So she's a VPE for Benoni Toastmasters. And we all reside in uh, in the East Rand in Kempton, uh, Ron Benoni area. Today is three o'clock in the afternoon in South Africa, a bit cloudy, a bit rainy, and we're all under lockdown. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. My screen keeps, keeps changing, so I'm probably going to miss some people, but I'm going to try to catch as many as I can. Let's see, I see is it Jerry. Well, uh, good morning from uh, a spot just north of New York City. Uh, it's uh, Connecticut. Uh, my name is Jerry Ayathure. Uh, it's about nine in the morning or a little bit past that here, and I'm so very happy to be with you all. Thank you very much and welcome. Okay. Let's see the next person. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name. <laughs> you see yourself highlighted. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. My name is Khatile. I am the VP membership from Benoni Toastmasters Club. I'm there with Ferdinand. And we are on day number eight of the national lockdown. It is just before three o'clock in the afternoon in South Africa. All right, thank I'm you happy to join this meeting and I'm happy, I'm happy that I'm meeting everybody. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, welcome. Let's see, next I can see uh, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name either. But <laughs> okay. Me. Okay. Okay. I got a mute. Hello. Yes, go ahead. We can hear okay. you now. I am. I'm, I'm in Singapore, Toastmasters. I just joined Toastmasters one month, wow. and now, yeah, it's now. 10 past 9 in Singapore. Hello, everybody. I'm glad to join you all and thank you for inviting me. Bye. Bye. Welcome. Let's see. How about all I see is Chen. Hi. Oh, if you I'm Chen. Hi, uh, I'm Chen from um, Dusseldorf. I'm a Malaysian and I 
VPM, a VPM uh, in the bridge speaker in Düsseldorf. Um, it is currently 10 past three here and we are six hours behind um, Singapore. Perfect. Look forward to the meeting. Thank you, welcome. Uh, let's see, how about, I can only see part of it says TM and then I can't. <laughs> Um, hey, I'm Arnab. Uh, I'm from, uh, I'm calling from Heidelberg, Germany. Um, I'm the VPPR for my uh, club here. It's the Toastmasters Rhetoric Club uh, Heidelberg. Um, and yeah, I'm a speaker today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Let's see. How about, it looks like Savoy. You lost your video and let's see, I'll unmute you. Oop. Where'd you go? All right, I'm gonna move on and let's see, how about, okay, it's all I see is speaker. <laughs> Hi, this is Anya Dai from China. My home club is Taizhou number one Toastmasters Club. Uh, some of you must remember two weeks ago, Coronavirus. 20, 20 members of my club came to join you just on in the Singapore online English. So I'm coming again. Hope right. we have a good night tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see your speaker. Welcome. Thank you. Let's see. Next person. Oh, Sadni. <laughs> Good evening to everyone. My name is Sajni. I'm from USJ Toastmasters in Malaysia. I'm currently the president of this club. And uh, I'm also a member of the TLI team of District 102 and part of the support team of the club growth uh, directors team of District 102. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Let me see. How about Sir Krishna? Yeah, here. Um, I Hi. am muted you. Okay. Hi, good evening. I am Krishna Kumar. I am from Suramban, Malaysia, and I represent. Personal Development Toastmasters Club. The time is 9.13, same as Singapore. Good evening. Good evening, welcome. Let's see, let me try Celine. From Johor Bahru, Malaysia. Now is 9.14 at Malaysia. Okay. Thank you, Lynn. Okay, let me see. Back to sick. That's it. I'm sh Chris. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Ah, uh oh. Yeah. I'm Krishan. I'm from Batiklo Toastmasters Club. I'm the I'm a member and a treasurer there. So mm -hmm. now the time is uh, six forty-four. The Batiklo is in Sri Lanka. Thank you and welcome. Oh man, my screen has really changed. So I said I'm sure I'm going to miss people now. Uh, let me try here. Okay. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name, but do you see yourself highlighted? Please speak. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody. I am from Niagara Falls, New York, USA. That's behind me. <laughs> and I've been a Toastmaster for over 20 years. I lived in Singapore for three years, many years ago. 
I am delighted and excited to be here in this Zoom meeting. It's my first week. And uh, greetings to all of you. Looking forward to an excellent, exciting meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you and welcome. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see who didn't I get last time. Okay, I don't think I've got. How about... uh, just an idea about protocol. Sorry. Yes. Uh, I think uh, there's a uh, dual uh, pushing of the button for the mic mute. If only one of you do it, then it doesn't get back into silent. That's what I observed in the last uh, three, four. I think she's on silent right now, so. Okay. Some of you didn't unmute quick enough, so I unmuted you, and that's why I did. Okay. All right. Let's see. Who did I leave off on here? Oh, I think uh, I said Winnie. Need to unmute. Or speak up, can't hear. Your mic's not working. You're unmuted, but still can't hear. Hello, can you hear me? There you me? go. Okay, we can uh, hear you. Uh. It's working, Winnie, just speak up. Hello, can you yes. hear me? Yes. No, maybe not. No, we can hear you. Go ahead and speak up. Micro. Okay. Okay. So I go on. I'm Winnie. I'm I'm from China. I'm from the same club. Same club of Taizhou number number one Toastmasters, and uh, I'm the visitor. I invited by my club member and she will help the speech tonight so i will stay here and uh, be her fans tonight i'm the invited one so thank you to everyone thank you very uh, much You're welcome it's a very good uh good very good evening we could enjoy together all right thank you and to turn back to toastmasters okay thank you oh uh, let's see some of you don't have your screen up but I can see, uh, is it Vikarna? Okay, unmute. Can't hear. Can't hear. We're doing we're doing this interview partly so that people can check their mics too, and some of them are not working. That means I will help you. I might um um mute people. Okay. Yeah, there's a whole bunch that I just have names, no no video. Marcus Wong, can you give your introduction? Mark Wong. Hello. Just go ahead. Hi, my name is Mark. Yeah, I'm from Singapore and I'm a member from Anchorville CC Toastmaster Club. And yeah, my time is 9.20 p.m. Nice to meet everyone, uh, you, everyone. Thank you. Let's see, Willie, you want to pick the next person? Yes, Rena, Rena, Nina. Okay. It's me. Yes. So I was, oh, okay. I'm Riona from China. Uh, I have some good news to share today. I officially became become a member of my Xinjiang Medical Thomas Club, and soon I think I will be joining you guys. Okay, I'm becoming a resident guest in your club now. So I just <laughs> think about this name. That's wonderful, right? Yeah. Thank you. 
<laughs> okay. Gary. Gary Aluya. Okay, please now okay. who else? Mindy who? Mindy who? My my fight. Hi everyone. My name is Mindy. I'm in Guangzhou, China. I recently became a new member of GDOPS Toastmasters in Guangzhou, and this is my first time to join SG Online. Nice to meet you all, and I look forward to the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. The next is SK. There's a guy called SK. Hi, uh, this is SK. I'm a member of uh, Cane Hill Toastmasters Club uh, uh, in Singapore. So, yeah, nice to meet you all. Okay. Rikara, Rikara, Rikana, you are Still not unmuted. Can you introduce yourself? Okay. Anyone who have not switched, please click on the yes button on your chat. I mean, on your body. Okay. Can I speak? Yeah. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Anand, and I'm a member of the SG Online Club. I'm from Singapore, and this is Harini, my daughter. She wants to join tonight's meeting. So, hello, everyone. Okay, who else have not speak? Raise your hand so we can unmute you. Hello, my name is CJ. CJ Lim from SG Online. Nice to meet you. Okay, okay. The next person I'm going to unmute is Shade Scott. Okay. okay, hello everybody. I'm Shante. I am from Shanghai Number One Club. In Club and Diamond Professional Speakers Club here in Shanghai. And I'm happy to be back here again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sipony Slim. Have you speak? Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Who else? Let us. Okay. The person who raised her hand is Nikki Warswan. Can you speak now? I'm I'm you you I'm I'm you, you already. Greetings, everyone. My name is Nikinji Warren Swan. I'm from Hamilton, Bermuda. I'm a member of the Bermuda Toastmasters Club and the On the Rock Club. I am the president, and I attained my DTM just past December. It is a pleasure to be with you, and I look forward to enjoying the meeting as well as learning from you all. The time is now. 10:26 a.m. Thank you. Okay. Any more? Anyone else? I believe we have we had go through the. Dennis, you can continue the next part. Or, okay. We can. Yeah. Okay. There's okay. one more person who will raise their hand. Actually, I think it goes right back to you, Willie. Are you going to do your do uh, the okay. presentation address? Yeah. I will do it. Flyer Toastmaster for Asia, Asia Pacific region, for Europe region, for America and the Oceania. Welcome to Singapore Online Toastmaster Club meeting number 18. We are a newly charter club since November 21st. 2019. Tonight's topic is open minded. Go. Let me share. Let me share with you my message. Goldberg says the most important component of club quality is open minded. 
he says club should be open in a variety of ways to new members, different points of views, and innovative approach can make maybe fresh and vibrant. Those master provide a lot of great resources for clubs to use and also to have to. The same open attitude facilitated member growth, he said. Members learn and grow where they are open to new experience, new ideas, and to be inspired as well as providing inspiration. Strong bonds are to follow the club when members share a race of experience. Members of Toastmaster, the law, Joey Club are highly connected through social events, team sneaky, and achieve the success together. The body started where a few members gave speeches that was highly personal. Where speeches reveal personal information that re resonate with the audience, connections are built that help lay the foundation for acceptance and belonging, as well as for foregoing strong relationship. Members who speak authentically and review variety motivate inspire and accept guests and other members. Think of ways you can add fun into the mix. The words of our father, Raj C. Smiley, we true to this day. We love in moments of enjoyment. It's important to focus on education and help members meet their goals. But be adventurous, there is room to explore new ways of learning why every part is a supportive environment. Let me share you a story that the Singapore Online English Toastmaster Club has experienced. Four months ago, when this club was chartered, we, ha we have tried to invite people Toastmaster for the people to come to Singapore. What do you expect? What do you think I receive? I receive the word and O or no. Or they will say, online is not my cup of tea. We have phobia in technology. There's no interaction online. We do not want to show our face because it will be recorded and many other reasons. Many of us started our Toastmaster journey by actually and a Toastmaster meeting at a physical venue that has physical interaction and networking and even after meeting catch up or we can have a personal gathering. When COVID-19 fell for an economic to pandemic, every Toastmaster of each club in the world will need to meet online where the club received a lot instruction for those master international that we have to meet online generally in person and, and up to do the first. That's why you are here today. I believe many of you are for the physical club. Those masters who are used to attend those master meetings at a physical venue still hope they can go back to meet in person as I mean as soon as possible because we still prefer physical interaction. So do those do an online those ones have interaction? The answer is yes. We still have the interaction through the, the icebreaker that most of you have introduced yourself, the table topic session, the speaker session, and your evaluation and most important, when the meeting was adjourned, just after party discussion, you can have the same discussion as what you have in the digital club. I will leave you with a quote. In my, a mind is a parachute. It does not work. Lift is not open. Oh, it's my friend, Jasper. Over back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Hey, thank you very much, Willie. All right, we're gonna move on to the next part of our meeting, which is table topics. And since there's so many of you, I'm sure that we are not gonna be able to get everybody an opportunity for, to participate tonight on table topics, but we'll try to get as many as we can and during about the next half hour. 
Uh, first of all, I want to draw your attention to the way we do timing here. If you, right now, you, one of the boxes should have kind of a gray, a light color, and you'll see some uh, numbers in the middle of it. There are three boxes where the timing will be. And so as you are, if you are asked to be on the table topic presenter, you may want to scroll your screen left or right until you can see the timer. And I'm going to let our, there we go, our timer right now is showing green. So if you see a green box, that's where the timer is. So please play with your, your screen, scroll left and right till you see the green box with the, le the timer. Now it's going yellow. Okay, so make sure that people are able to see the timer. All right, so now that you've found that, I'm going to ask our, time, our table topic master to come up and give us our table topics, challenge us with questions, and hopefully we'll be able to come up with answers for her. So please help me welcome Angela Ansbury as our table topic master. Take it away, Angela. Good evening, everybody. Lovely to see you all. I'm a member of Singapore Online Toastmasters. I'm also the area director of S3. And in that area, I'm a member of Tampanese Chankat Advanced, and I'm president of another club, Battle Heights Advanced. But I'm also a member of a fourth club in London called Herovians. And we do table topics differently. Table Topics has the usual system. It was origin, Table Topics were originally picked from a table. So the person who picked it up saw what the topic was and talked for two minutes. And what you will do is you will talk for a minimum of one minute, at which point you will see the green timer. Can everybody see the green timer? Um, you'll see the person with the word timer and then you'll see the time. So watch out for the green, which means go. You can go after one minute. However, most people who want to take advantage of the whole two minutes, they will keep on talking till they see the yellow when they think it's time to wrap up and stop. And then they can keep going till the red, which means stop. But sometimes you're in mid sentence and you get another 30 seconds. If you're in a contest, you have to reach green and not exceed the buzzer after the two and a half minutes. And you can, if you're within the time limit, people can vote for you as the best speaker or the judges can vote for you as the best speaker. Now, I've got a series of 20 topics on tonight's theme. However, instead of picking on somebody and then getting them to speak, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the topic and this is what we do in London. You will all have to think what you would say in answer to that topic. And then I'm going to ask you to raise your hands and I'll pick one of the hand raising volunteers to answer the topic. So the first topic I want you to think about is by George Bernard Shaw. And he said, those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. And I'd like you to think what changes you have made. And Willie told us what opposition he had to the idea of an online club. What opposition did you meet from others or from yourself internally? Bearing in mind Bernard Shaw's quotation, those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. And here is the quotation. Do I have a volunteer? Hands up for a volunteer, otherwise I shall have to pick. Ah, I see one. I see a volunteer. Can I unmute you? Let's see. How do you pronounce your name? Mukles Ra something. Excellent. Thank you. Again, good afternoon or good evening or good morning to everyone. Madam Topic Master, fellow Toastmasters and most honored guests. Change 
is something that defines our life. We are born as a baby and then we grow up and then we grow old. Change is everything. There are many people who are afraid of change. And I am not different from everybody else. For example, public speaking is the most feared item in many people's mind. So in order to change that, we joined Toastmasters Club. And then of course, you and I become unstoppable. We'd like to speak anytime, anywhere, any place to grow, to adapt to change. Change can be good and bad. Getting to accept as things happen, some are in our control and some are not in our control. Current example of uh, coronavirus is something that we know, unfortunately, has affected, infected over a million people around the world. It's a great change. Stay at home is a great change. I hope we'll grow out of this situation and emerge better in life, in environment. Thinking is one of the best way to overcome change and then plan ahead. I'm sure this will also pass just like the major big World War I. The Cold War after the World War I was terrible. And this uh, virus is going to make us a united world. Like today I'm speaking to you. I think that was the greatest opportunity of this change. So please welcome change, thank you. Thank you very much, very topical answer to the question of open-mindedness towards change. Our second topic is a quotation from George Eliot. It's a narrow mind which cannot look at a subject from all points of view. Do you consult everybody or make quick decisions? Please describe an incident when you looked at things from all points of view and consulted everybody maybe still made your own decision. I'll quote George Eliot again, it's a narrow mind which cannot look at a subject from all points of view. Do I see a hand raised from someone who wants to talk on this subject? I see Marcus with a hand raised. Come in Marcus, unmute yourself. I can't unmute Marcus. Willie, can you unmute Marcus? He's talking, to... ah, oh. hooray. Hello, Marcus. Okay. Hello, everyone. I think there are many challenges in our lives where we can ask nearly everyone who seems to be important for us. We can ask our friends, we can ask mother and father, maybe our siblings, we can ask them for their opinion with regards to a specific challenge. But in the end, it turns out that we have to take our own decision. We are responsible for our own decision. And in the end, everyone is an individual and no one else, not, neither the father, mother, brother, sister, or the best friends can exactly know what is the best decision for us? And especially with regards to relationships, I think, or to marry someone even, I think these are decisions you have to make on your own. You have to look inside yourself and you have to feel what is the right decision for you. And everyone can give you a good advice and you can welcome these advices, but in the end, whom you marry is always your own decision and you only you are the person who can consider 
your own feelings. I wish you good luck. Thank you very much, Marcus. Oh, a deep thought there, who you should marry. Uh, Angela, be sorry, this is really hard. Before you, you get the table topic, can you please, please type me in the chat so that people can, can recall what is the topic because I have received messages for the Toastmaster that the message is too long and it is not clear. Okay, right, so that okay. Thank you. Um, the next one, I'll try and type it in to everyone. Mark Twain said, travel is fatal to prejudice. Do you agree? Travel is fatal to prejudice. Do you agree? Does anybody want to answer this? Does anybody? I see Jerry. Hello, Jerry. Unmute yourself. Tell us something from your life, how travel was fatal to prejudice. This is one of my favorite quotes, and I'm so happy you brought it up. I'm going to take the position of disagreeing with it because it is such an insightful quote. In what way can I disagree with the idea that travel is fatal to prejudice? Well, I see and I observe many people who travel and are still quite prejudiced. So if I take it literally that travel is, is fatal to prejudice, it, my observation tells me that's really not true. People visit other countries and they walk away with the same preconceptions with which they arrived in other countries. But I think what he means is something deeper than the literal meaning. He means we must take a walk around in our minds and in our hearts to put ourselves in other people's shoes. And in that sense, well, yeah, if we could find a way to visit other people emotionally and intellectually, uh, and perhaps even travel physically, then of course, it would take away a lot of the judgments that we make out of ignorance about other people. That's just my point of view. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jerry. And if you look in the chat, you'll see the next one, which is slightly similar. Different species have different values. Do you agree? Different species have different values. Who wants to speak on this? Do I see a hand? Or do I pick somebody? Oh, I see a hand from Joan. Come in, Joan, unmute yourself. And tell us what you have to say. I totally agree with this. Different species have different values. I mean, um, I have a dog in my house and uh, the amount of love and affection that he shows uh, when, you know, when another, any person, somebody enters into the house, um, or even especially my family members, when they enter into the house, he, he showers them with love, affection. And, um, you know, he's, um, but it, it, again, you know, it's, it's probably not the same, even if it's stranger, he wants to kind of jump on them. He's friendly with most of them. And, uh, you know, the kind of probably he shows is different, but he's most of the time he wants to just be like, he's very friendly dog, but it's not the same with human beings, is it? I mean, when we meet with strangers or we, you know, it's you, usually, you know, it dif depends on, you know, where you come from and how, but we, you know, we smile sometimes, sometimes we just walk away and it would be just nice. Like if all these animals who chirp and who laugh and who are friendly with each other, even if they don't know their own species, uh, you know, like my dog, when I take him for a walk, he wants to bark and he wants to be friends with other dogs. And I wish, you know, we just have to learn from these animals sometimes how we need to be friends even with strangers and how we have to smile to them. And, you know, uh, like even with uh, people who are from different countries, we have to be ju just be loving and affectionate and sharing. Um, 
And this, this is exactly what we are learning from COVID-19, I feel, you know, like we all are the one and the same. COVID-19 has not spared any one of us, whether we are from Italy, whether we are from Korea, whether we are from China, we all have been affected similarly with COVID-19. So I guess we just have to learn from uh, mammals like dogs and birds and other species to be just loving, sharing, sharp and be smiling and uh, learn from them. Thank you so much and back to you Toastmasters of the day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joan. I think everybody loved that one, the description of your friendly dog and how we're all the same. Right, I will now put up the next question. I'm clicking and nothing's happening. Send chat to everyone. The, the question is, Keynes said, when information changes, I change my conclusion. Who wants to speak on that? When information changes, I change my conclusion. Do I see a hand or do I pick somebody? How about Doreen? Doreen, are you there? Can I unmute Doreen? Doreen has disappeared. Do I see a hand or should I pick somebody else? Ferdinand wants to speak. Suresh. Doreen, are you going to speak? Ferdinand wants to speak. Later. Later. All right, Suresh. Suresh. Silence. I'll pick someone who's smiling and moving. Alicia. The question was, when information changes, I change my conclusions. Alicia. I think Ferdinand raised his hand, give him a chance. Okay, Ferdinand, where are you? Ferdinand, hello Ferdinand, come in. Unmute yourself. Still on mute. Okay, there. Hello. Lovely. Right, you can hear me now? Yes. Okay. Thank you for this opportunity. So the topic is, when information changes, I change my conclusion. I think it's very relative, relevant to the position we are all in now, with this virus, for instance. In the beginning, there's a lot of fake news that went around the world, where it started, how it started, what caused it, how did it treat it. And we all had all different ideas, and everybody was able to type a message, send out all kinds of different messages about the virus, how to treat it, how it started, where it started, and what can be done to cure it. And every time you get more information, you change your mind about it. And you think about more and more about it. And the more information you get about it, the more you become informed about it. And you start to realize that you must be very careful on all those fake news that are floating around. And that's on all subjects. There's always a lot of fake news around. So always make sure that you get the right information so you can make the right conclusions. Otherwise, you'll find yourself in troubled waters, making conclusions on the wrong information. So yes, definitely, the more correct information you get, the more you will change your mind and realize what is the real truth behind the matters and make better decisions for your life and future. Thank you, Madam Table Topics, Master. Thank you, Ferdinand. Another very good topical answer. Our next question is, Learn to walk a mile in someone else's shoes. 
who has done this, learn to walk a mile in someone else's shoes. Do I see a hand? Do I see a hand for someone who's... Ah, Chen. Yes, Chen, can you unmute? Chen from Germany. Hello, can you unmute? It's not working. Willie, can you help? Hi. What he says disabled me from unmuting myself. So a very good evening um, to everyone here there. I think the question is, learn to walk a mile from someone else's shoe. As an immigrant myself here in Germany, I come from Malaysia, and I've never experienced living in another country in the past. So I came to Germany about 10 years ago, and I started to realize all the changes that every immigrant felt in living in abroad. Oh, it, there are good things, so don't think about the bad things. There are good things, like changes where you experience, and not, where you don't experience normally in your country, such as eating with your friends, such as the food, such as a different culture in a new country. And when I went back to my own country a few years ago, it really hit my mind to notice the life of immigrants living in my own country. I started to appreciate how those immigrants coming from Nepal, coming from Myanmar or Bangladesh, live like they live not as well as us, they eat not as well as us. They even earn not as much as we do. Things like this make me realize how happy I am actually in my life. I have a roof above my head. I have something to eat when I'm hungry and I have a stable job. And when I see these immigrants in my country, I often smile back at them and ask them a question like, how are you doing? Are you doing good today? They often, they look puzzled because they couldn't understand why am I doing this? But I can tell you this, if you have been through another person's shoe, you start to appreciate all these little things in your life, all these little things that you have come to get for free. And I encourage every one of you here to walk a mile, or maybe not a mile, maybe just a few meters with the shoes from another person, and you start to see the world from a very different perspective. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chen. I like that, walking not a mile, but just a few meters. Um, can Alicia type into the chat box, because I can't seem to get it working. The next quotation is from Abraham Lincoln, one of my favorites. I do not like that man. I must get to know him better. Have you ever found that you got to know somebody better and you no longer dislike them and in fact like them? Abraham Lincoln, I do not like that man. I must get to know him better. Do I see a hand raised for somebody who's had this experience? and agrees with this sentiment. I'm looking for a volunteer. Is that Sean Tay Scott? Yeah, uh, Sean Tay wants to speak for it. Fine.
Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Madam Table Topics Master, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests, I do not like that man. I must get to know him. As humans, we like to act as if we don't judge people, but the truth of the matter is that everybody judges. We all judge people by their appearance, whether we like to or admit to doing this or not. Sometimes when you encounter a person who you may or may not think you will like, sometimes you need to just take the first step, test your hypothesis, like a scientific equation. If you are doing a, an experiment and you think that your experiment should turn out a certain way, you need to test this hypothesis. So why not try that with people? If you think that there's someone that you will not like, instead try to get to know the person. Test your own judgment and hypothesis in your mind. See if this actually will be the case. Sometimes when we feel like we already know what the answer will be, we get surprised. So if you run an experiment, a scientific experiment in a lab, and you get a different result than what you thought, how does that make you feel? It's the same with when you go to get to know someone that you think you won't like. How does that make you feel? Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, I encourage you to test the hypothesis and try to get to know someone better who you think you may not like. The results may actually surprise you. Back to Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you, Shante. That was lovely. Now we have something vaguely similar. Um, I don't know who said this, but it's something I've heard many times. I complained because I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. I complained because I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. Have you had an experience like this when you were whining and complaining and realized that there were others worse off than yourself? Do I see a volunteer who wants to talk on this subject? Please raise your hand. I'm having trouble with my connection. I can only see half the people and I can't see the arrow. So can somebody tell me if there's a hand raised? Willie, can you tell me, is there a hand raised? Adele? Ada, Adele. Ada. Adele is, uh, Adele is ready. Okay, please come in. Unmute yourself. Hello, good, good uh, evening and morning, everyone. Adele, hello, Adele. Welcome, good everyone. Time. Please go okay, ahead. Can you please uh, repeat the question, please? Yes. I complained because I had no shoes. Then I met a man who had no feet. I complained because I had no shoes. Then I met a man who had no feet. Do you ever, have you ever found that you were whining and complaining and realized you were not the worst off person? Okay, the, the, the last sentence, please. I repeat the last sentence only, only please. Can you repeat the last sentence only, please? Okay, okay, I will start. Um, I think um, uh, it is dependent on what 
every every one every time you speak with the people, uh, you uh, if, even a kids of if you if you realize or not or if you don't, everyone uh, give by talking with just normal talking is you are giving a message. Okay, uh, if you realize that of or if you don't. So I think that one of the most um, factors that uh, affect what your message is, um, um, I think as everyone knows, is uh, body language, uh, eyes to contacts, and also the, uh, the, the words, how, how do you say it? Um, how, much you're, how much you are controlling your, your, feel, your feelings. So I think, um, Every time I talk to everyone, I uh, the most the one of the most also factors is uh, listen, listening. I think if you pressure others, it is dependent on list, list listening. If you don't, if you listen uh, much better, if you if you're listening completely and uh, perfectly, this will help you so much to deliver your your message and understand others. And also, you will short the time to. Uh, make effort on others, even your 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 family, your son, your your dad, in growing up, your kids, and in, in in the work environment. Environment. Every time you give uh, a talk, you you are delivering a message. Uh, so uh, it is different also in um, the psychology of the other other bears, other person. If um, are they ready to listen, or maybe sometimes you. Uh, you just need to. Uh, some people only need to li to listen to listen to to you, and uh, more than anything, or or they or they need. Let's say they need someone to listen to them to feel their to so you can feel their feel or understand their, their suffering. I have I am remembering some uh, someone who's um, his uh, his specialist in repairing the relations. Uh, he said, I, uh, I have received a call from, um, from uh, a wife and uh, for 45 minutes, she, and he, he was just listening to her. At the end, she's uh, changed the, the, her feelings to her husband because she found someone is listening to her all the time for 45 minutes, uh, simply. So th and to thank you very much for uh, your time. Thanks. Thank you. A very good example of people listening. Excellent. Next question. Don't judge a book by its cover. Have you ever found that a, a book was better inside or a person was better inside or an object was better than you thought at first? We'll make Don't... this the last one. Right. Okay. One last opportunity for one person to raise their hand and speak. Don't judge a book by its cover. Do you have a volunteer? Mimi will go next because she raised her hand earlier. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to answer the question. Do, don't judge a book by its cover. Well, I, I would like to uh, answer this question directly to the title because I'm currently I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm just, uh, I had a dozen of books brought, brought online and I need to finish a task at home. I read a, need to read dozens of pages every day. Then, you know, when you say some, some kind of strange articles such as project management methods and theories, and when you say the, say the word theories and you say it's a tedious book. And so, I, I bought a book and brought the PMP program management guide and I thought it will. I cannot understand one sentence inside this book. So I brought another guide, another guide written in Chinese by a Chinese professor. And then this guide recommended another book. He writes it in the he writes it, uh, on the name of program management. Oh, let me check this book. Oh, it's not Barbara here. It's here. Well, oh, lovely <laughs> <laughs> program management methodology. Okay, well, it's really a very thick book. Well, I thought it would must be you know as tedious as its book cover. Well, it looks like nobody wants to pick it up in the bookshop 
bookshop. So when I started reading it, then it's finally it is a very interesting book, and the, the professor writes his own stories when he touched the program management since the very beginning when he was very very young and he, uh, in t attend a international program. Uh, that build uh, such kind of uh, a very big project in China. So it's the first project in China. So that's why he entered this field and became a professor. So the whole book is kind of stories on, on he, how he experienced in his career. So I, I totally feel, well, it's not so hard to read the book through. So I kept on my past about to read about 10 pages or 20 pages a day. So uh, I would like to suggest to you, maybe you, f you could find it's a very tedious book as, as its cover. Well, and nobody wants to pick it up in a bookshelf. And when you read a show and you start reading, then everything becomes more interesting. So I suggest you to touch every book that looks very tedious as a book cover. Thank and you, I Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. So we've had nine excellent answers. And now we're going to do a vote on who you think was the best speaker. Do is there somebody who can put up the voting, uh, Willie? Willie, is Willie with us? Toastmaster of the day, do you want to move on while Willie will tell a joke? While we're waiting, I can read some more questions. Yeah, I think we need to move oh, on. We're, we're, we, uh, I can launch the polling. Anandi, I can launch the polling. Right. Uh, nine speakers all together, right? Yes, Shan Shan has just given us the timing. Um, are we going to allow everybody, even if they went over time? So I don't think everyone could see. Right, we've got everybody up. So please cast your vote who you think was the best speaker. Okay, we have half, half the votes are in. Well, I need some more voters. Okay, you got one more. Okay, we got 52% need a few more vote, people to vote. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it about 10 more seconds. We only have 18, 19 out of 35 people voting. Okay. I'm ready to shut the balloting down. Okay, I'm going to end it right now. Uh-oh. Nope. I'm going to relaunch it just for a little bit longer. We have a tie. Somebody needs to vote. <laughs> Let's vote again. I had a tie. Okay, 13 out of 35, come on. This is almost like an auction. You got to keep people in this vote. Thirty-seven percent. We had more people last time. All right, I got a clear winner. I'm going to go ahead and end the polling. The winner is Joan.
Congratulations, Joan. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close the balloting. Let's see, it is about 10 past the hour. Let's take about a 10 minute break so we can get everything else together. I'm sure that it's been a long time for everybody sitting. So we'll take a 10 minute break. So 20 past the hour, we will return. And if you're leaving, you go ahead and turn off your video. Then when you return, turn your video back on so we know everybody's back. So we'll be back at 20 past the hour. Okay. And I'm going to remember to pause the recording this time. I'm going to restart. Okay. Okay. Hey, welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the Singapore Online English Speaking Toastmasters meeting. We're now ready to move on to the next part of our, present, our meeting, which is the speaking part. And tonight we have, let's see, I think we have four guest speakers. This is quite, interest, quite interesting tonight. Our first speaker is going to be evaluated by, I believe it's Cindy. And Cindy, do you have the information that you need to evaluate your speaker? Cindy, where are you? You. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and Cindy, unmute yourself. And do you have anything to talk, um, tell us about our, your speaker? Um, okay, there you go, it's in, we, Hi, I have the information I need. Yes, can you just explain what you're going to be looking for? Uh, to present a speech about the experiences of leading, leading a team to the completion of a project using any format that appeals. All right, thank you. Okay, let's see, where'd my speaker go? Is speaker is Arnab. Arnab, are you ready to go? I'll go ahead and give your introduction. The title of his speech is Cycling or Leadership. And he says that he's going to be sharing how he's led lots of people at, at various cycling expeditions or events and what he has learned. So please help me welcome Arnab. He will be speaking five to seven minutes. Okay, Arnab, go ahead. Cool. Uh, so everybody can hear me? Yes. Cool. So let me begin by asking, how many cyclists do we have here in the club? Cool. So in 2013, when I took up cycling, I was unaware of what a fantastic path I was going to walk on. By 2018, I finished 60,000 plus kilometers of cycling. Today, I want to tell you how cycling brought in a sense of leadership in my life. Fellow Toastmasters, dear guests. In 2013, when I walked into a bicycle store in Mumbai, I could never imagine what a lucrative investment I was making. I spent all my savings buying a bicycle, almost 1,500 Singapore dollars. That's about 1,000 euros. I remember my first bike ride back home. It was 13 kilometers long. And I thought to myself, wow, this is amazing. I don't need public transport. Soon, I became an active member of the cycling community in Mumbai. And in no time, I was popular as a crazy cyclist. I developed an addiction to cycling. I just could not have enough of that adrenaline rush. So I was either cycling early morning or I was cycling late at night but I had to cycle every day. It was a drug I needed so bad. In no time, I became a popular site for people who were out during those odd hours in the city. And it became quite common for me to receive compliments from the passerby. Once, a girl leapt out of the car screaming, hey, come on, you can do it. That's how I figured out my Gmail ID bike around Mumbai at gmail.com. Cycling meant a new life to me. So I gathered a bunch of other crazy cyclists and we started spending all our weekends just cycling and cycling. Sometimes 300 kilometers, sometimes 400 kilometers, and sometimes 600 or more. But there were some cyclists in our group who could not experience so much during their youth. 
Well, when they were young, they either didn't have the money or the time to pursue such an expensive hobby. But now they wanted to experience something unusual. One day, a gentleman asked me, can we also cycle hundreds of kilometers like you do? I suddenly saw a dream, a wish, and I said, yes, sir, of course you can. So in the December of 2013, we planned a cycling ride along the west coast of India from Mumbai to Goa a beautiful scenic route that runs parallel to the coast. 650 kilometers with more than 8,000 meters of elevation climb. Quite deadly, isn't it? I remember in the scorching afternoon heat, some people would give up and would get down from their saddle and start walking up the slope. This was the perfect time to show my leadership skills. So I went pedaling behind them, screaming, come on, get up on the saddle. You cannot walk, you can't give up. Some did get back on the saddle, but some were just too tired. Remember, when you are a leader, your job is to motivate and remain patient. But the most important thing is to empathize. Sometimes we had a flat tire and we could not afford to delay the entire group. So I opted to stay back and fix the bike and the rest of the group moved on. Remember, as a leader, you always lead from behind. You always push people up from the bottom layer of the society. Almost every day, I was single-handedly leading someone still pedaling after the sundown in pitch dark conditions in the middle of nowhere. Just me, my partner, and the moon and the stars. Today, I can brag about it. I can say I indeed led my team through dark patches. Every evening after the sundown, we would land up in a village and organize food and shelter. I remember how I taught people how to stretch early morning so that they don't cramp and encourage them every evening with inspirational words. Today was a great day. You all did really well. We are almost there. Keep going. Remember, as a leader, you can't just always shout. You have to lead by personal example. So I never gave up on any climb, never got up from my saddle. And on day five, we finally reached Goa. You know, all these people had a very monotonous life, but when they realized their hidden potential, they found a new reason to live. They rediscovered themselves and they started dreaming again, like they dreamt when they were young. Today, I have something more to live than my family. That's how they felt. So let me finish here by quoting, up, quoting Albert Einstein on cycling. Einstein said, life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> I can relate to part of that. I, I do bi uh, ride a bicycle, but being a se senior citizen, I have a little, I have a motor on mine. Mine's an e-bike, but I do get around and ride. I think last year I put uh, about 800 miles on it. All right, let's see. We're trying to get our second speaker's evaluator ready, and I'm not sure if he knows that he's being, he's the evaluator yet. Peter, are you there? Peter Ng? I saw you there. Where'd you go? Whoops, what's this? Get out of there. 
Peter? Okay, well, I think we've, we've sent you some text messages to your computer in the chat box. Okay. 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 Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I am the evaluator for someone, I guess, tonight. Yes, the next speaker, speaker number two. Speaker number two. Yes. Let me quickly flip to the, do you happen to have the evaluation? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and read it and then you can go ahead and just evaluate the speaker and, and write down what you heard, okay? That's wonderful. Okay, thank, thank you. you, Peter. All right, let me introduce our next speaker who's gonna be Shadre. And he is working on a project the out of the storytelling book, the first one, and it's supposed to be a folk tale. And for our timer, the presentation is supposed to be from seven to nine minutes. And he's supposed to tell a folk tale that is an entertaining and enjoyable uh, for a special, excuse me, for a specific age group. He's supposed to use vivid imagery and voice to enhance the tale. So the presentation again is for seven to nine minutes. And it's the speaker is Chaudhry, and he is going. The title of his presentation is Folk Tale, Fairy Tale, or Aesop Fables. And he says, Live in the moment. Okay, go ahead. Where'd you go? <laughs> what happened to my speaker? I saw him there earlier. Where is he? No speaker. Where? Uh, Alicia, do you see him? Oh, there yes. he is. Okay, just no video. Unmute me. Okay, I finally got unmuted. Sorry about that. Uh, there's obviously issues somewhere, so back on. Oh, I see. You got two. Okay. <laughs> okay, if you got the timer in the window so you can see it, go ahead. No, I'm trying to get it. Just give me one second. I'm sorry because I was typing away, so. Okay. Okay, there we go. Did you know? that there's a difference between, I'm actually getting a lot of feedback all of a sudden. I don't know, somebody's bikes acting up or something. Which, you're, you have two screens up, which one are you using and? Okay, here we go again, sorry about that. Let's, let's take this as take two, hopefully you guys are not getting any feedback and I'm ready to go. Okay, go ahead. Did you know that there's a difference between folk tales, fairy tales, and fables? Good evening, fellow Toastmasters from all over the world, or good day to you. Believe it or not, when I actually got to know I was gonna be doing this topic, I decided to research the difference between folk tales, fairy tales, and fables. Yes, there is a big difference. Folk tales are uh, something which is passed down generation by generation. It can be something traditional. It can be something uh, to deal with culture. Folk tales usually always entail as the main character to be an, a human or an individual, and it's always overcoming some challenge. A fairy tale is written by an author, and it's got to do with embellishment of the story just to make it entertaining for children. Coming to fables, fables are, are based on myth and they are written again um, to educate people about them. Usually fables are 
animal centric and animals may have certain powers. So let me quickly give you an example of uh, a folk story. A folk story would be like the emperor has no clothes. It's the same story which is repeated in Spain, which is um, thin, thin cloth or thin thread, uh, or in Turkey, it's also known as the emperor with the new turban. It's the same story, same baseline, but just different, uh, just differently put together. A fable is something which is animal centric, which would be such as the fox and the grapes, where the fox said, ah, the grapes must be sour. Now that you know the difference between the three different types of stories, let me present to you the Pied Piper of Hamlin. Long ago in a village called Hamlin, they, the people, the residents were fed up with all the rats and vermin all over. And they had tried everything to get rid of the rats, but were not successful. They would open the ladder, they would find rats. They would try to get into their bed and a rat would jump out. They would be putting on their clothes and a rat would come out of the closet. So they finally got frustrated and went down to the mayor of the town. And they said, there has to be a way that we can trap these rats. There has to be a better way. We have to come up with a better solution. We have to create more and more traps. As they were talking about traps, there was a rat on the door. And they all wondered, who could that be? In walked a person with a pointy hat, red in color, wearing a yellow scarf, a red shirt, striped trousers, which had green and yellow on it. They all looked at him as he walked across to the mayor. And he said, I'm the Pied Piper. I have this talent that I can make anything underneath the sun listen to me. In fact, I got rid of the bats in Asia. So the mayor, along with the town council, looks up at him and says, can you help us get rid of the rats? He said, if you pay me a thousand guilders, I will get rid of the rats for you. The town council and the mayor look at him and say, a thousand, we will pay you 50,000, get rid of the rats. So the Pied Piper, after hearing that news, smiles to himself, walks out. While he's walking out, people can see him adjusting his scarf. And right there, they see the pipe. He picks up his pipe with his hands, puts it to his lips, and starts playing two to three musical notes. Before you know it, you can start hearing a little bit of scampering. You can hear a pitter-patter. You can hear a slight rumble. The rumble becomes into a roar. The roar becomes thunderous. And before you know it, you're seeing rats jump out from everywhere, from houses, from trees, from bushes. They're coming out of the gutters. And they start following the Pied Piper. He goes down the main street, takes them left, takes them right, and more and more rats are coming out. Soon, he walks them down to the main river of the city. He steps into the river with his pipe and keeps playing it. The rats follow him into the river. Most of the rats get swept away. He's still continuing his journey. He comes out on the other side. One big fat rat comes out like Julius Caesar and he scampers away into the fields. The Pied Piper comes around, gets onto the bridge. He can hear the village people cheering. He can hear the bells. He can hear people singing. He can hear other machines working. There's no longer the screeching sound of the, of the rats. He goes back, starts walking towards the village. He hears the mayor shout out saying, get the carpenters in town. We need to fix all these holes. We need to have no signs of these rats. He gets to the mayor and to the council and says, please give me my thousand gilder. The mayor, ashen face, looks at the council and says, we saw what you did. You took them down to the river and the river helped you get rid of them. So as we are true to our word, we will pay you 
but we will pay you 50 guilders. The Pied Piper is not happy. He's like, no, that's not what he agreed on. And do not think about being, about renegotiating with me because it has not gotten well with the prior parties. So the mayor thinks, I'm, I'm talking to a piper who has barely any clothes on. He doesn't have much negotiation power. Says, no, nope, we're gonna pay you 50 guilders. Pipe Piper is not happy. He decides, he gives them one more warning. They don't heed to it. He walks down and he picks up the pipe. This time he plays th three simple tunes. The mayor and all the town people are aghast at what they see. They hear a pitter patter of teeth. They hear these small children with their wooden shoes clop clopping away, running towards the pipe piper. These rosy cheeked kids just running after him. They try to raise their voice, but they are rooted to the ground. Nor can they move, nor can they scream. But the pipe piper starts playing his tune and starts taking the children away from the village. The villagers think that the moment he gets to the bridge, he is gonna let go of his tune because he's gonna to need to take a breath, but the Pied Piper does not. He continues, he goes on to the mountain and as soon as he gets to the mountain, a, a big door opens up into the mountain and the Pied Piper leads the children into the mountain. As the last pipe, a, a child crosses in, the mountain closes. There's one child left behind. This child was lame and who could not keep up with the pace. He was actually very, very sad. Now that the music has stopped, the villagers and the town council can again speak. And they start screaming out to their kids. And they scream out to the Pied Piper saying, come back, come back, we will pay you anything you want. But there's no Pied Piper coming back. They send out all the adults, east, west, north, south, Go look for the Pied Piper. Let him bring us our kids back. But there's no Pied Piper to be found. So just like in the present day, we seem to have this COVID-19 going on. We need a Pied Piper to come around and take it all away. Back to you, table topic. Uh, back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you very much. Yes, hopefully there is some kind of a Pied Piper that will find a way to rid us of all of these germs so we can all get back to our normal life again. Thank you very much. Okay, our next presenter is Anaya. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. And Alicia is your evaluator. Alicia, do you have the information about our next presenter? Yes, I have. Okay, could you please let us know what you'll be looking for? Yes, Toastmaster Anya will be touching on speaking on speeches by management, project for communicating change. To introduce a new idea or change to established operations or methods, show the audience how the change will benefit them, overcome any resistance to the new idea and gain the audience's support. The speech will be from five to seven minutes and good luck to you, Toastmaster Ainia. Back to you, okay. Toastmaster. Thank you, Alicia. Now is our next speaker ready? Okay, the title of the presentation is From, from Accept to Embrace. And Ainia is the founding, founding president of the Taizhou Number no. 1 Toastmasters, and she was a consultant to open four new Toastmasters clubs in the Taizhou um, during the last four years. She's pursuing her DTM before June. Hopefully she'll be able to make that. So please help me welcome our next speaker speaking on From Acceptance to Embrace. Go ahead. There we go. You're unmuted now. Good. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. Ladies and 
and a gentleman. Could you feel the passion from my eyes? Actually, I had exaggerated my passionate expressions triply compared to what I did in the physical meeting. But it did it seemed it didn't work well. See? Nobody just nod his hand. Two months ago, my VPE called me. Hi, Anya. I'm sorry to tell you, you still have 14 speeches left for your DTM, while there are only 12 meetings in our club before this June. What? Are you serious? Yes, and we have to operate our meetings online because of the coronavirus. What? Are you kidding me? Operate a meeting online? I never did it before. How could I have eye contact with audiences online? How could I to make movements or gestures online? What if actually nobody looked at me or listened to my speeches via internet? What if my baby girl just ran into the room to make noises? So many questions ran into my mind. What should I do? Accept it because you have no choices. A voice sounded in my mind. February the 5th, I did my first online speech. No laughing, no clapping, even no coughing from audiences because everybody else was muted by the operator. I didn't know any reactions from audiences. Did they? Look at me like this, or like this, or even like this. I didn't know. I became completely blind online. Then I received photos afterward. Dim light, messy background, crazy impression, ugly impressions. Oh my goodness, it was a disaster. I feel so impressed, depressed. What should I do? Accept it because you have no choices. But to accept it didn't make me happy at all. Should I quit it? Then I remembered my mom always said, a cup of water could be half full or half empty. It all depended on your attitude. She's right. I realized, although I accepted, I complained to accept it. When I did a speech online, I just did it to prove what I was worried about was right. It's not the change, but my attitude to accept the change negatively to make me unhappy. Since I couldn't change it, why not just face it like a new journey? Why not just embrace it, at least to make it interesting? Since I changed my attitude towards it, I listed three steps to fit it soon. Step one, I needed to change my image online. So I read the introduction of the Zoom completely to find a magic button called touch up your appearance. To turn it on, my skin looked smoother immediately on the screen. Nice function. Step two, I needed to sit in a good position facing light. So I held my laptop to walk all around my reading room in every corner and every seat to find a perfect light. I thought I had made my best, but to my surprise, one of our club members did even better. She bought a lamp called Online Celebrity Light, which made her look even prettier. Then I got it as well. 
have a look. Step three, in order to make my speeches more attractive, I was suggested to use more interesting and bright tools according to my stories, like books or bright sheet or even toys from my babies. To my surprise, I started to anticipate online meeting. I know, although I have still a lot of things to improve, it seemed to open a new window for me to keep digging and keep learning new skills in this new, new style. To my surprise, since nearly all Toastmasters Club have been operated online, I could visit them all around the world without password, passport. It's really a precious chance to learn from so many brilliant Toastmasters. And I also got more chances to make speeches in other clubs. To got my goal of my DTM before this June won't be a dream anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to admit, change might be the only constant in the universe. No matter we create a change initiatively or we come across it passively, if we have to accept it, why not to step forward further to embrace it? Trust me, positive attitude would bring surprises for us one day. Thank you. Back to Toastmasters. Thank you very much. Very enjoyable presentation. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Moving on to our fourth speaker. Let's see, our fourth speaker is going to be evaluated by Gerald. Gerald, do you have the information to evaluate our next speaker? Yes, I have. Okay, okay. Give, me, give me a while. Let me pull right. up my... Okay, got it here. Okay, the objective is dealer and an attending dramatic talk about an SPR incident include vivid imagery characters and dialogue, deliver the talk in an entertaining manner. Five to seven minutes is a timing sequence. All right, thank you very much. Okay, let me introduce our next presenter. It's gonna be Doreen. And the title of her presentation is Face the Challenge. So please help me welcome Doreen speaking on Face the Challenge. Go ahead, Doreen, unmute yourself. Whenever you're ready. Uh, just give me a minute. Okay. Okay, now where is the timer? Okay. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, in January 2020, when the COVID-19 was first announced. I have been receiving updates and videos on the coronavirus. In February, when the situation became more serious, I received more videos on the infected COVID-19 patient in the ICU. The sight of it saddened me. It was very heartbreaking. Trust me. The life-threatened COVID-19 patient, once they recover, they will never, never forget what they had gone through. No eraser, no blanco, or the duster would wipe out those memories. I can empathize with them because I was in that situation before although not directly, remembered in the year of 2010, 10 years ago. One day, the ringing of the mobile phone broke the news to the worries and the problems of the days ahead. 
my niece was in ICU for the inflammation of the pancreas. Have you heard of triglycerides? The fats in the bloodstream is very high and she is in critical condition. You imagine her like a COVID-19 COVID patient in ICU. She was all wired to the monitor. You can see a tube going through the nose into the lungs to drain out the liquid. And at the same time, there is a mask over her to help her in the breathing. The only difference was that my niece could have her loved one besides her, talking to her, holding her hands. She was not alone. How about the COVID-19 patient? They are all alone, only with the doctors and the medical staff. For fear of the condition worsened, the family vigil, stay vigil 24-7 at the ICU waiting area. You know what you did? We play musical chair by the 24-hour cycle, not by music. At any point in time, there's always one person in the ICU in case of emergency. Currently, the COVID-19 pandemic, people are told to stay at home, to stop spreading the virus. At that point in time, 2010, 10 years ago, we were all out in the hospital to root holy my niece. Our life was disoriented. We had to reorganize, redesignate delegates the duties and responsibility. And also we have to face many challenges. Challenges to stay strong, challenge of the emotion to remain calm and composed in front of the patient. My younger son, was assigned the duty to babysit his two nieces of age one and three. Being his first mission, he faced many challenges. I could remember on the first day of his duty, he called me, mommy, mommy, the little girl is hungry. How to make milk? Oh my God. After 15 minutes later, I received another call from him. Mommy, the little girl puked on me. I think he's facing this kind of challenges. By evening, she gave me another call. The little girl poo. I have already used the white wraps to clean her. Must I wash her? The, this conversation between myself and my son was recorded. We play this recording day in and day out to holy the patient to remind her that she has to stay strong as there are two kids waiting for her at home no matter what the focus is on holy watching the monitor it's very stressful you can see that the bp and the pulse rate are as though they are in a racing competition. When the BP rate goes 163, 164, 170, the power rate also catching up, 164, 165. And at the same time, Holy was gasping for air. <sighs> Luckily, my son, the elder one, was with me in the ICU. He was watching his cousin. Then he said, Jie, Jie, this rhythm is too fast for you. Please slow down, follow this. Take in one deep breath and two short breaths. He demonstrated a few times. We echo 
this day in day out to my to the patient wholly our effort was rewarded few days later her bp and her pulse rate was stabilized her breathing comes back to normal she doesn't have to be put onto a ventilator the lungs was clear of liquid praise the lord she was moved up to the normal ward ladies and gentlemen be it holy information of the pancreas or the current covid-19 pandemic the life threatening journey was or is a wake up call for all of us please do not take life for granted remember to heed to the doctor advice stay home to stop spreading the covid virus over to you those master of the evening thank you very much is everything okay right now with her is it is this, do we have a happy ending to your story yeah she got it okay great <laughs> yeah all right, our next presenter is going to be evaluated by CJ. So CJ, are you ready to evaluate our next presenter? Giddy. Go ahead and uh, give a little bit of background what you're looking for. Okay, me now will be presenting the entertaining speaker part five, speaking after dinner. Objective of the speech, to deliver an entertaining after dinner talk on a specific theme. Deliver the talk using the skills developed in the preceding projects. Timing sequence is 8 to 10 minutes. Good luck, Mina. Thank you, CJ. Let's see, I'm trying to find Mina so I can get ready to highlight her. Uh, anyway, uh, Mina is going to be giving a title. Her pre the title of her presentation is A Girl's Story, and it's a story of a girl who later becomes a role model. So please help me welcome Mina speaking on A Girl's Story. Where are you, Mina, so I can highlight you? I don't see you. I thought I saw you earlier. Oh, there. Oh. Mina, go ahead and say something so I can highlight you. Oh, there you are. I can't. Okay, I see you. Okay, just... Need to unmute. Okay. Can you unmute? I'll, I'll unmute you. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, hi. I, can you hear me now? Yes. Have you been awestruck seeing a lady, not for her looks, but for her attitude? Have you ever wondered if a normal girl can become a leader and lead millions of people? Good evening, Toastmasters and dear guests. Today, after, speech, after dinner speech, I wanted to make it valuable and a memorable one for you. I have a story of a girl who became a leader and a role model to many other girls in the society. I'm going to talk about someone back from my native. I was, I was taken aback. I didn't know her for years when I grew up, but I remembered once my mom told me to act as her in a fancy dress competition. I refused. I said, why should I do that? She looks so fat and she's not interesting. I denied that opportunity and went back, not participating in the fancy days. Now, after knowing about her, I regret it. If I keep telling that she's great, she's that, she's this, you will not believe me. To start with, I'm talking about the girl whose name is Komala Valli. Throughout the story, I will call her, call her as Komala. Komala was born and brought up in a very middle class family. 
to the to the surprise or to the pain her father demised when she was young her mother was pushed to be the breadwinner of the family her mother along with komala and her little brother came to a city and started their life her mother did very simple jobs and learned the living for the family her mother once got an opportunity to be character character artist in the movies this story dates back to the early 19th century or maybe 1930s in exact so her mother at that time came up as a character artist where the entire society is male dominant she struggled to get roles and she struggled to get even a single penny but somehow she made komala and her brother study in convent because they were merit students and they got it into scholarship program komala after seeing her family situation and having a very good interest in studies started to study well and excelled in her studies she always came up first and she loved to do that again and again she got the state gold medal award for her o level and she dreamt to become a lawyer she ha- even had in mind which university she wanted to choose she even had the road plan ready but with the time and tide deciding her fate her mother lost her job she never got any more opportunity in the movie her mother was taken aback her mother was in a traumatic situation how to lead the family the little girl's mind was nothing about all this situation or the worry in the entire family all that she was thinking about was her becoming a great lawyer she dreamt it day in and day out and she was always running behind that dream but to support her family and to satisfy her mother she agreed and accepted the opportunity that knocked her door yes she got a very good role in a movie as a lead actor komala being a girl of great passion and struggle and determination grab that opportunity and try to excel in even in that field although the little girl's heart shattered because her original dream of becoming lawyer is no more valid and she got the new path to become a great lead actress and to support her family she came up as number one even in that field she struggled struggled hard did what not and she acted in 140 movies through five different languages she grabbed whatever opportunity she got in the film industry and earned as much as ever money she could her family came to a good situation now kamala started getting bored of being an actress she thought why should be a, should i be an actor am i just worth being an actress or am i worth more she started thinking there came another knock at the door another opportunity as she was acting against a lead actor who was a then politician and then cm of tamil nadu he gave an opportunity for komala to become the publicity ambassador of his party she immediately agreed to it and she grabbed that opportunity and thought okay maybe this is going to change my life yes it did she came out of the out of her wall and she saw the world as a politician she saw lots of opportunity lying over the road ahead she took the road sooner or later she became the party chief after the demise of the great man mr ngr who was the then cm and who gave the opportunity to komala she succeeded him and she became the chief minister of tamil nadu she successfully became the chief minister for three terms 
But this is not the best part of the story. The best part is she won the hearts of people in Tamil Nadu. She became Amma of Tamil Nadu. Do you know what Amma means in Tamil? It means mother. You know, if a man or anybody calls someone Amma, he really means it. To the great, to the world and to the Tamil Nadu people, she became Amma for everybody, which means she did that many things and she implemented so many good schemes in Tamil Nadu that she won the hearts of Tamil Nadu. She implemented schemes like midday meal for the school kids. So, here's a short story about Tamil Nadu that the kids don't go to school during that time because they are forced to do work. But she introduced the midday meal to attract the children to come to school and start educating them. So this is how she made Tamil Nadu move up in the education level. She did other things which are like mid midday meals and then she started a government mess where she can give food for just to feed one to the poor and the needy. So she did all these things. And she won her. But why should I tell you this story of this Komala, who is then called Jailalita? Why should you know about her? There is three key takeaways from her life. Number one, see, don't be shattered if your dreams are lost. Don't be shattered if your dreams are taken away from you. Wait because there is a greater dream waiting for you to achieve. How you are born is not a concern for anybody, but how you live and how you die, as if you die as a person known to more many, you are remembered for what you have done. So how you are born is not of concern, but how you live is of concern. Lastly, and the most important takeaway is, don't underestimate the power of a woman, especially don't underestimate yourself to have more than what you can. If you don't believe in yourself, who else will? With that, back to you, Tushmati. Thank you very much, Meena. Okay, well, this almost wraps up the program. I have one more presentation and we will be done with our speaking part of the program. Let's see, for our timer, I've changed the time on mine. I'm gonna just do five to seven. And what I'll be doing is I'll be giving a, a brief educational presentation, something that I've found that probably everybody can use, hopefully. And uh, I will be sharing my screen on this, just a moment, let me get this set up. And okay, okay, does everybody see a PowerPoint presentation? Right now, I can't see anybody, but uh, please, somebody speak up. Let me know if it looks all right. Yep, it's good. Okay, great. All right, so. Many times speakers feel that they're so well known that they need no, no introduction. On the other hand, if you watch a professional or paid speakers, they usually have a detailed prepared introduction that is given to the MC of the events. Tonight we'll look at how we can do better in making prepared introductions for ourselves and make us seem more creditable. And first of all, I'm gonna put up a disclaimer that this presentation that I'm about to give is extracted from the Toastmasters Better Speaker series. And it also may not necessarily apply to contest speeches. Okay, do you watch TED Talks or maybe even professional speakers? Think about the way that they're presented and think about how you made your last introduction. Even very well-known pe people like Zig Ziglar has a detailed prepared introduction. Have you ever been, to, let me back up. If you've ever been a speaker, when I've been serving as a Toastmaster of the day, you may remember that I probably asked you a lot of questions about your speech. Well, tonight I'm gonna to explain why I do this. 
Okay, get this to move to the next screen. Okay. Okay, oh, well, depending on which, I know we have a lot of visitors tonight and you may or may not be using easy speak, but this is what we do in this club and whatever you folks use, this should apply to no matter uh, what software that you use. This is a screenshot from our easy speak agenda and it's asking for speaker information. And this should be filled out by you as a speaker at least pri the day prior to our meetings. And if you look in the middle of the screen, there's a real narrow box. And this narrow upper box is where you need to put in a speech title. It's similar to the headline in a newspaper paper or a title of a book. But if newspapers all had TBA for a headline in their articles, or books or bookstore or library that had TBA, what would you think? To me, TBA is not a proper speech title. That means you're not ready. You haven't given enough thought to your presentation. And I might want to even remove you from the agenda if there's no title by the start of by the time we start our meeting. Now in the middle on this middle tab, what you'll see is it's labeled workbook speech. And this is where you enter your speech project information. And it also will let everybody know how long is your presentation. And on the bottom, this larger box is probably the most important area to be filled in. And it's how you want to be introduced. How can the introducer help you set your stage for you? Are you going to be interpreting poetry or recite a famous speech? If so, who are the characters? What is the time of day or year? And generally, what is it all about? Okay, why is the title important? For example, if you were giving an icebreaker, which would you rather listen to? The title was given, this is me. And that's all you were given for the title. Or if someone gave a different title for the same speech, my favorite things that I did as a teenager, which sounds better to you? A good title gets the audience ready to hear your speech. It gets them guessing about what it's going to be all about. And next, it gives them a basic idea of the type of information that will be given. Is it going to be an information giving presentation or an information taking presentation? Also, is it okay to start, it is okay to start with a working title such as TBA. Now that's okay. However, a good title is better when it is written after you have finalized your speech. Do it after you've really figured out what you're going to say and then come up with your better title. And or if you've already come up with a title, make sure it fits what you really want to say. Okay, again, besides getting the audience ready to hear the speech, why is introduction important? What if you're going to read some poetry or recite a historical speech? You need to have an introduction that helps set the stage for you. Now, most of our Toastmaster speeches are between five and seven minutes long. If you have to spend one to two minutes to describe your speech, now you're down to five or six minutes of total time for the real part of your speech. And what's going to happen is you're probably going to speak over time or have to leave some stuff out. But with a good introduction, you can then jump right into your speech without any delay or further explanations. Here in the United States, if someone starts off a speech with saying four score and seven years ago, most of us here in the United States would recognize this as something that President Abraham Lincoln said but people in the rest of the world may not have a clue. So this is one reason to have a speech introduction, a good speech introduction. Now what it will do is also people will know what to expect. And this is speech for a special occasion. Are we bidding farewell to a person who's retiring? Are we gonna learn about a new project or something that we all need? Why should people listen to you? Do you hold a high degree from an educational school? Is this something you've been doing for a living for over 10 years? Or have you written five highly acclaimed books on this topic? Well, this is the basic stuff that you should include. First, who are you? Next, what are you gonna talk about? And what is the name of your speech? And for Toastmasters, there's some special stuff that we need. First of all, which project are you working on? Next, what is the specific requirements of your project? And finally, how much time are you gonna need? And this is very important for your timer. 
Now here's the basic things that you should include in assembling an introduction. First, how is the speech going to be organized? Is it going to be chronological? Is it going to have historical events? Are you going to do time travel? Such as, I'm going to take you back in time and this is what they're going to, and this is what to expect when. How long is it going to be? Is it really going to be short or is it going to be long? If you're going to say something like, I'm going to be, I'm going to keep it brief and there's going to be a test afterwards, uh, people may want to sit up and listen. Are you going to be also giving it from the standpoint of being a storyteller from your point of, your point of view, or are you going to be telling it through someone else's eyes? Are questions and an answer, or, excuse me, are questions and interruptions okay? You need to provide other pertinent information that would be helpful for the audience to understand the speech especially including any technical terms, acronyms, abbreviations, or units of measurement, such as miles versus kilometers. And also make sure that you let them know that you might have a degree or working knowledge of this subject matter. And there are many things to consider when you create a, a title and introduction. You need to think about this for your next presentation. I hope all of this helps you prepare a better introduction and also help out the next person who might be Toastmaster of the day. And that concludes this presentation. Mr. Toastmaster, excuse me, that my son, that'll be me. Okay, that concludes our speaking part of the program. And what I'm gonna do, instead of taking a break, I'm gonna continue moving on and go right directly into the evaluations. Let's see, our first evaluator is, let's see is going to be Cindy for our first speaker. Cindy, are you ready to evaluate our first speaker? Okay. Go ahead, unmute yourself. Can't unmute, I'll go ahead and unmute you. Oops, there, now you're ready. Oh, I'm sorry, before you forget, um, if, I'm sorry, we have to do uh, voting for the best speaker if the poll is ready. Okay, I'm not sure if the poll is, whenever the poll is ready, it'll pop up. I guess we can just go ahead whenever the, okay, there's the poll. Okay, please vote for the person for the best, who did the best job of speaking tonight. Can everybody see the voting? Oh, it's closed. Okay, let me relaunch it. Okay. I was doing educational, so don't vote for me. Okay, we have eight, oh, well, got only 30%. Come on, let's get the numbers up. Okay, we're up to 37%. Come on. Okay, well, someone has a clear majority right now, so I'm I'm going to go ahead and end the polling. And the winner is Ania. Congratulations. Did I share the results? Okay, there it goes. Okay, I'm sorry for interrupting you. <laughs> Go ahead, Cindy. Oh, okay, I start. Yes. L let me uh, evaluate uh, our speed by giving best to give my evaluation. B stands for body language. I can see his whole body when I see his presentation. Uh, in front of us. I want to commend that his effort that he doesn't use any notes. It takes a lot of time in preparation. Among the rest of the speakers, he's the one which we can see his whole body. We make us very interested in listening to him and make us feel closest with him. He has very good eye contact. When he speaks, he looks left to right. Even though it's online, I can feel that he's speaking 
to me. And in terms of S, speak structures, he starts with his speech, with an opening, asking a question. It drew our attention immediately when he asked the question, anyone of you who are cyclists? This really, really made us because most of us really cycled before, but he cycles a bit different from us. He cycled long distance cycling. And next, he shared about his background, how many kilometers that he clocked in his cycling. Really let us know how does he as a cyclist that he cycled in a long distance. And next, his body. He shared about the leadership that he has possessed, motivation and empathy that he possessed in, in leading his team. And let us know, give us example how he does when he leads his team. But one thing is make me feel curious. I want to know what age group of cyclists that he lead so that I can relate in his story even better. And his closing, his end his speech with a quote from Albert Einstein, emphasis on keep on moving. The whole speech does not relate with his speech title about cycling or leadership. So maybe he could ask a question, do you agree about cycling or leadership? Do you agree with people who cycles long distance, long distance possess great leadership and discipline? In the personal, when listening to his speech, I feel that I'm very proud of him that he able to cycle long distance and I can feel his passion and love for cycling. For Tone, I can feel that he has great enthusiasm in his speech. You may need, for areas that he needs to work on, he may need to see his own video, that he keeps using this close hand gesture, which may make us feel that he may be nervous in speech. He may use open hand gestures so that we can see how he relates in his speech. To challenge yourself to a greater height, it would be great that he can show us his bicycle behind the he's in his room so that we can see and relate on how he do his speech. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you very much, Cindy, for a good evaluation. Okay, our next evaluator is going to be Peter for our second speaker. Peter, are you ready? See the time clock on your screen, Peter. Peter, are you there? Okay, well, what we'll do is, this Peter isn't on screen yet. We'll go ahead and move on to, we'll skip and we'll come back to Peter. Alicia, are you ready to evaluate our next speaker? Alicia? Uh, yes, I'm, re I'm ready. Okay, please go ahead. Peter isn't on screen, so go ahead. A very good evening to club president, members and guests, and especially to Toastmaster Aini. Well done and congratulations for giving us a very good speech on change. Now, today's evaluation, I will evaluate Toastmaster Aini in two areas. The first area is what she did well on meeting the objectives of her speech. And then the next area is in meeting the objective of speech, what other things she can do to improve and bring her to a higher height. Mm -hmm. Now, the first area, she certainly met the objective of the speech. And the objective required her to fulfill a few areas. First, did she explain the nature and scope of the change? Yes, definitely. The nature of the change was that coronavirus happened and she was forced to go from online, from offline to online. Right? So she met that. And did she use the four steps to deliver her message to the audience? Yes. She used her case whereby her VPE called her. She had no choice. 
She only left 12 meetings and she had 14 speeches to complete before she could achieve a DTM. And then coronavirus came on. So definitely she motivated the audience that online was the way to go. The other area, they are still on meeting the objectives. Did she, was she able to overcome any audience resistance? Now, the audience are mostly, if not from excluding the online attendance, online club audience, most Toastmasters are from offline clubs, physical clubs. So most of them was, will be unfamiliar to online. And she was able to overcome audience resistance by sharing the three-step process, changing her image, sitting in a very good position, and having interesting props. That encouraged audience to lower the resistance. And she also talked about the new window with the online facility there's a new window open up, open up to learning new skills, new styles, and visiting Toastmasters clubs all over the world. All in all, but she could improve in her speech further by having some pauses in between and also to sometimes slow down. I notice she's a bit too fast and to lower the dramatic a bit so that people will listen even more. And remember, people will remember how you made them feel. They will not remember what you made you said, but they'll remember how you made them feel. So with that, I hope you can accept these recommendations and bring you to a higher level. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you very much, <laughs> Alicia. Let's see, it looks like Peter is already, okay, Peter, are you back? Okay, Peter, can you go ahead and inch? Okay, we're ready for evaluation of the second speaker, if you can get your audio through. Let's see. Okay, okay I can't great. hear you. No, no, can oh, you Oh, there you go. Now? Okay, yes. Right. Because the host is controlled the audio, you have to unmute me, I can't unmute myself. Okay, got it. So I was shouting as loud as I could earlier. <laughs> okay, I'll be evaluating Toastmaster V. Chowdhury's uh, Storytelling Advanced Project 1, Storytelling uh, Book Tale. Now, Toastmaster Chowdhury told us the book tale of the pipe piper from Hansel. Now, for those of you who can remember this story, uh, prior to that, she started off with a very good introduction of the difference between a folk tale, a fairy tale, and a fable. It is a very informative opening. But then he dived into the story straight away, bringing us fresh imagery of how the town is being overrun with rat. And I believe the highlight or climax of his whole story, as he described it, happened after the Pied Piper knocked the door and was introduced to the story. By the Pied Piper playing the music, he brought us to that exact scene where there's the rat coming out, the, the Peter Pepper um, running around following uh, Pipe Piper all the way to the river. Now that part is very well illustrated in each of his descriptions of the story. After the part, it becomes a third person story, especially when it comes to the negotiation between the town mayor and the deputy and Pipe Piper. He said, he said, he said, he said. I would suggest that Toastmaster Chowdhury include 
their dialogues into it. A moment of silence engulfed the three of them looking at each other. Pipe Piper walked away. You know, describe the story. Bring us back into imagery. Now then, Toastmaster Chowdhury went into the bringing away of the children. And towards the end, a twist of the story where he was hoping Pipe Piper would be a change agent that would bring us away from the coronavirus or the COVID-19 situation that we are, we are currently facing. Now that has changed the entire concept of the folk tale. If I got it correctly, Pipe Piper was seen as a figure or symbolic figure of death, bringing disease and starvation. And it was in the original folk tale described as the children either died of starvation or disease. So it's a good twist to the story. However, it's, it's not going to be the same story being told in the traditional folk tale manner. I must congratulate Toastmaster Chowdhury for bringing us the live imagery because this project is purely using his voice the modulation, the rate, the pitch to tell us and bring us into the story vividly. Now how the story ends is not the point of the evaluation. So I say Toastmaster Chari, a job well done. You have used your voice very well without any physical body gesture. You brought us into the story and I would say most of the time I'm mes mesmerized by the way you've described it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Okay, we have two more evaluators to go. Our next evaluator is Gerald for Doreen. Gerald, are you ready? Uh, okay, can you spotlight me? Yes, your spotlight, right? Whoops, let me put... Oh, spotlight me? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, let me pull out my evaluation notes for Doreen. Okay. Uh, hi, Doreen. Good to evaluate you after so long. I mean, it's been a while since I last evaluated you. I don't know how many years we have not. It's my first time evaluating you online. Uh, it was a very touching story. Let me address it in a, in a chronological order based on your objectives of your speech that I see in the evaluation guide. I already sent an email to your your email account already, right after your right after your speech already. So she, we were, she entertained us through emotional connection through her story. So that's what made her a entertaining speech enough. That's how we, we can see. Furthermore, she was able to even connect with us because the life and death situation of the ICU uh, partly also touched my heart because our, I have a past career of fixing this kind of equipment. Not in the not in this kind of medical devices, but not in the ward. I've serviced the devices back in the lab. So I knew what is the extent of this message and she shared her predicament through a lot of rigid imagery, the challenge phase, the coordination, even I was surprised. And when her posture, when she was speaking at, she was able to even give us some hand gestures and facial expressions, you know, to make the message clear. So, there's only one major recommendation that I have think you just need to push the emotional boundary online further is speak slowly, reduce the pause, increase the number of time of doing the duration of, of the pause to invoke the message even longer, despite speaking on time. So it's quite a challenge. Because so, the climax was very good, you see, that you had. It's just that sometimes in bandwidth transmission on Zoom, you have this, there is problem of me, I had to slow down to speak. So even, even I don't make an emotional story, I have to even slow myself even slower in vocal rate, even in tone, in tonality, all areas of vocal variety, that had to be reduced even more. So when you have a long pause, 
the message was sunk in very deep into the audience because it's just like an emotional roller coaster that you had given us. So all in all, you, you had a very nice wandering story, you touched, you had strong emotional connection to everybody because it, it links to the ICU uh, area of interest because everything that we have, like and even the current coronavirus, the one of the, one of the leading symptoms that it has is a phonomia or something. How can I couldn't pronounce it well? But that condition is very serious. So you highlighted the gravity of the event that happened to you. So that makes it a very dramatic impact. But the, that dramatic impact was very emotional and it, eventually you did uplift us at the end of it. That so I had to stay strong and do it. And I hand back to Dennis. Dennis, back to you. Thank you very much, Gerald. And the final evaluator for tonight is going to be CJ, and he will be evaluating Mina's presentation. CJ? Hi. Uh, okay. Fantastic Friday, Club President, fellow Toastmaster, and distinguished guests, especially to the marvelous Mina. She missed the objective of her speech. I love her speech and how she connect to the audience with her smile. She was calm, cool, confident. She delivered ideas, inspire and motivate us by sharing with us how a poor girl can overcome obstacles to be a great leader. She excelled in her vocal variety and her gesture was effective. Her speech is entertaining, enriching and enlightening for me. Her volume of vivid vocabulary enables us to visualize how strong the woman Komala is through her facial expression and hand gesture. She told us to be more positive and never give up. And most importantly, she said, do not underestimate the power of women. To improve on her speech, when telling a joke or a story, she can pause just before she delivered the punchline. I feel that she's going a bit fast, so she needs to add pauses in her speech to create the tension in the audience. The pause can also signal to the audience that she's going to say something very important. The challenge for her to soar to greater heights is to put in a stronger call to action. All in all, I feel that Mina is an eloquent speaker. She excels in her hand gesture and her eye contact. She is as cool as a cucumber. Just to take note of engaging the audience and to add in more pauses to generate anticipation in the audience. Challenge for her is to use a quote that can build a powerful climax in the ending. As my favorite Maya Angelou quotes, people will forget what you say. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you make them feel. Thank you for making me feel. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you very much, CJ. Okay, now we'll wait for the poll to pop up and vote for the person who did the best job tonight as evaluating. We'll wait for that. It should be coming up shortly. And while we're waiting for it, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, thank everybody for participating tonight. We had up to, I think we had over 40 people on the screen at one time. And I'm really glad that everyone was able to come and visit us tonight and hope that you'll be able to come back uh, another time. And where's our poll? We had so many people, unfortunately, not everybody got to speak, but we tried to catch you folks at the very beginning to be able to speak and check your microphones. Is the ballot ready? <laughs> Anytime now. <laughs> and thank you, Shao for being timer. We, even though we couldn't see you most of the time, we did see the clock, thanks. The timers report is up. 
in the chat box. I've had quite a few comments in the chat box about people wanting to attend our meetings and being on our program. Um, I'm trying to, I guess what we could do, you could do is uh, we do have a Facebook page and you could put your request in there and we'll try to capture your request for speaking opportunities through that. That'd probably be the best way to do it. And also when you, when you do communicate that with us, we would like to be able to communicate back with you. So if you do put in a request and we honor that, please let us know how we can contact you because the Toastmaster does need to get a hold of you to get your get more information for your introduction. Let's see, I don't know we have any particular email ID that we can use. I think probably just go ahead and do it on Facebook because there's quite a few of us monitoring it. So uh, someone should be able to catch that for you. Are we ready to vote? There's panels. The other meeting must be over. <laughs> well, let's see. Is Willie working on the ballot? Otherwise, we could have him do his concluding remarks at the same time. Let's see. Okay, there's a No voting? Anybody got a joke or something you want to tell? <laughs> we need something to kill some time. <laughs> well, let's see. What else? Um, let's see. Program. Uh, Boy, it's pretty quiet here. A whole how bunch come, of Toastmasters. How come, and... how come people say that they are muted and they cannot speak? What? Somebody wants to speak. I see someone have hand up. Mm. On they mute. say that they cannot unmute themselves. Oh, I can't unmute them right now either. There we go. Mm. No, we need to change our settings. Settings. Well, let's see. Is there a way? Let's see. There's a way. But this the thing is said by I think said by Willie when he he added the thing. Yes, milk, milk before or something. That's the thing. That's what. Okay, I'm gonna hit. See if unmute all works. Is that? Is that was good. Nope, it still didn't work. Now it's good. Yeah. Yes, it's now working. it's working finally. Now we can participate. Otherwise, we will just. Yeah. Yeah, because earlier it was just on mute. Okay, yeah, we're just killing time right now till we can vote, so everybody can speak up. I, I can give a joke if somebody. Okay. All right, go ahead. Oh, yes, let's what, have a joke. What travels fast, heat or cold? Heat. Heat, because you can catch a cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dennis, can I ask a question, please? Yes. It's for the timekeeper. Um, we were having trouble in South Africa with how we can do our timing, and I really like how your club has done the timing. Um, could the timekeeper perhaps explain how they put the time on the screen so that we can try that in our next club meeting? Oh, it's quite okay. complicated. Shang can explain to you. Um, this one you need to download. Okay, let me speak while I talk. Um, can someone mute the others because there's an echo at the back? We can hit mute off. You can hit mute off. Yeah, just hit mute off for now. Then I'll. Yeah, now we gotta unmute Sean Sean. No we worries, okay. Okay, got it. Okay. Alright, so here, uh, can everybody hear me now? Yes. Okay, you need to download this app. App is called. Do you see it now? It's called the Manicam. 
And then when you join in, you have to activate your mini cam. Okay. Uh, let me do a share screen. Give me a moment. Uh, okay. Now, does anybody hold on? Hold on. Let me just show that. Okay. Let's see. The balloting popped up. And this you can see that. You can go ahead and vote while we're doing this too. Okay. Does anybody? Can anyone can see my screen right now? This is the timing. Yep. If you take a look at your site here. Uh, okay. This one. This one here. This is where the timing, and we usually just use the stopwatch part. Okay. And then you can just continue play, or you can do a stopwatch. Then once it's that, you can restart here. This is the restart button. And then you can set which one you want to do. But of course, when you set this up, you have to link back to your Zoom meeting. Uh, hold on, let me see. Where is my... Okay, then you zoom back, go back to your video settings and set it as many cam, webcam, but turn off your virtual background. Okay. Ah, sorry. Okay. So anybody is clear on that? Yep, looks like we're voting again. I see that CJ's on there twice. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's showing evaluators. Yes, but CJ is on twice, uh, so do not, do not, that his, his name is, he has names as a bit twice. Okay, I'll, I'll leave it up for just a few more seconds and we'll go ahead and close this and let Willie give his presentation. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and end the polling. It looks like the winner is... Can everybody see that? Let, let me try again. Let's see, can everybody see that CJ is the winner? Congratulations, CJ, for best evaluator. Okay, well, this finally concludes my part of the program, and I'm going to quickly return the meeting back to our club president so he can close out the meeting. Willie, back to you. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day, fellow Toastmaster. I do apologize for my absence because I'm a call to work. By the way, I'm a major incident manager, so anytime there's an issue, I have to work. Okay, coming back to the meeting. Congrats to all the winners for favorite topic, for best be best speaker, best evaluator. Every one of you have taken the one step. You open your mind to online meeting tonight for Singapore Online, the 100% online club. You have enjoyed. I have looked through the smiley face the laughter, the entertain the entertainment and the waving of hands that show that that tell me that you enjoy the meeting at the Singapore online meeting tonight. It's not only tonight. The next 52 weeks we hope we want you to be back here because you are part of the Singapore online English Toastmaster Club family because regardless whether you are a member the official member of this club or not as long as you attend the singapore online kiwi shows master club meeting you are part of the bigger family we have we have tonight we have close to 50 toastmaster including members attending this meeting the last time we had was two weeks ago when we had a joint meeting with Haito Toastmaster Club and Fuzhou A Plus Toastmaster Club where they take away our out of 20 table topic question, they take out at least 75% of the team and we only take three table topics. So in the end, 
<laughs> Alicia Wong 咁咧，點樣當 Miss Rita 嘅博士嘅博？ I know it's that day that for people in Asia, it's almost midnight. For people who are in Europe, it's noon time, about one or two p.m. And for people who are in America or South Africa, you are just starting your day. I do hope to see you next Friday, same time, where you where you get to see. Meet Daryl the call in person, up and personal, because the last time I met him was in twenty o three in District eighty camp. So you guess how long I was in it? I was a post, but I I left for a period of time. But I came back two years. Ago. So why him? Why not the recent world champion? Because most of the world champion speaker. The coach is Daryl Lacour. It's not anyone else. That's why, fellow Toastmaster, I can say that tonight the team of the meeting open minus you have make it. You have made the Singapore online club by attending this meeting, and we ensure that the next fifty two meeting we make it. We make it more more. Kind of more wonderful and fun because Singapore Online those master truck. We are a young club. We have a driver. That's where you can improve. Where where you can improve in your public speaking. We take care of members' education needs. That's why there are a call was our. Money activity workshop that we conduct for Toastmaster, not for Singapore online, but throughout the whole world. And I end my speech. I repeat what I mentioned. My quotes of the day. Sorry, I I can't find my phone. <laughs> but never mind. If you go change your mind to open to the whole world, means you go open your head, your brain to the whole world. You are just an ordinary person out there, and those master can't help you if you go open your mind. Fellow those master, the meeting is adjourned, and we can talk freely now. <laughs>